Romas. Their craziness doesn't stop at their oblong fruit. I sometimes wonder if they don't know that they're a determinate tomato living in an indeterminate world. Or maybe they're an indeterminate plant afraid to reach for their max potential. Either way, Romas are simply a must for both tomato paste and sun-dried tomatoes. So let me show you how I plant mine and it starts right now. Romas are classified as a determinate tomato plant, but trust me, they need support. Their fruit may not be huge, but what they lack in size, they make up for in numbers. The ideal stake size is a 2x2 fir or pine, roughly 4 feet long. This will allow us to poke about 12 inches into the ground to provide enough strength for support. I make pointy ends on mine because it's way easier to hammer them in. Fortunately, we already have a bed prepared to plant our romas. Because we observe the no-till style of organic gardening, we don't plow or rotivate the soil in our beds. Instead, through a series of mulches and soil covers, we consistently choke out and suppress new weed growth with each planting of each new crop. This allows us to rotationally plant new crops without very much effort at all. So with the bed prepared, our next step is to measure out where to put the stakes. Whenever possible, if you can put your staking system in place before actually planting your tomatoes, take advantage of that. It's infinitely easier than doing it later on on the fly. Here I have an eight foot bed, so I'm gonna do four Roma plants. Don't make the mistake of filling up your beds to the current size of your plants. Look at the planting guidelines for when your plants are fully grown. With an eight foot bed, I go one foot in from each side and then two feet between each plant. So we space the stakes at one, three, five, and seven feet. As we said before, pound them down at least one foot to ensure that they can hold the weight of an adult Roma plant. Now that we're all set up, let's grab our Romas. Romas are a determinate tomato variety, but as seedling plugs or in small pots, they quickly grow long and lanky and flip over. This actually isn't a bad thing and I always strive to work with plants that have advanced past their current stage of growth. When Romas, or any tomato plant really, flop over, they rapidly begin to send out stem roots. These roots are known as adventitious roots and are the single reason why tomatoes are the most popular backyard garden plant. These roots allow the romas to double or triple the root systems in short order. And this allows the plant to not only resist transplant shock, but to actually experience replanting vigor after being moved on. The presence of these adventitious roots affects the way we plant. Taking your pot in one hand and with the other hand straddling the stem with your index and middle finger gently coax off that pot. At this point, remove any leaves or shoots that remain on the horizontal section. If need be, use the ground to support the foliage of the Roma plant to prevent it from snapping in half. Using the curve of that stem, orient the plant so the vertical part just meets the stake. This particular Roma plant is a picture perfect example of how I want them to look when I move them onto my raised beds. Depending on the size of your Roma plant, tie off one or two sections of the stem to that stake. Go ahead and do the rest of the Romas in the same manner. If it's a particularly hot day, simply wet the newspaper or row cover below and maybe cover those root balls with wet paper towel or something similar. Finally at the last one, and check out the adventitious roots on this guy. Unbelievable. There's more roots on this plant's stem than there is underground. It really does make planting these guys so easy, knowing that they're going to have instant root systems.
The beds look sparse and insignificant now, but tomatoes are the one plant that give users satisfaction in mere weeks. Time to plant. Employing this method of no-till, no-dig gardening means that planting is beyond easy. Grabbing your favorite potting mix, simply bury the root ball as well as any portion of the stem that's horizontal. With a healthy dose of that mix, planting out these romas takes mere seconds. Any decent organic potting mix will do, but I'll throw a link in the description below for you DIY types to my ultimate potting container mix that you can make right at home. Don't skimp on covering these plants up. We don't want the buried stems to be exposed in any way once we plant. In a very short period of time, these stems will actually be the majority of the root system. So it's mission critical to get them planted right the first time. And when you look at the square footage of the bed, we're actually using very little soil comparatively. If you're buying your potting mix, one of those 30 liter retail bags should easily be able to plant out this bed of four romas. And when you think about the cost of a $3 bag of soil versus the hundreds of dollars that four large Roma plants may produce, that's got to get you excited. All planted. The entire bed took us about 10 minutes. Our temptation now will be to immediately water these Romas, but there's one more step first. Using a loose organic mulch such as straw or shredded leaves or grass, we must cover up the entire bed to fully set these romas up for success. Lay the mulch on thick at least two inches. It makes no sense to skimp here. Mulching serves three main purposes for our tomato plants. It'll suppress and prevent new weeds from coming up. It'll also moderate extreme temperatures, which plants do not like. And lastly, and most importantly, it'll mitigate moisture loss, allowing us to water less and avoid common tomato problems. More on that later. With our bed generously mulched, we can finally take that celebratory last step of a job well done and water the plants. Water every inch of the bed and mulch, giving it the soaking of a lifetime. With an eight foot bed like this, I'll overhead water with at least 30 liters or eight gallons of water. With tomatoes, and especially romas, I really like them to be watered deeply less often than superficially watered every day. That does more harm than good, and I'll explain why. Being a foliage and fruit heavy tomato variety, romas are susceptible to a condition where their fruit ends don't develop a cell wall, and it appears to rot. This is not a disease, it's rather an environmental reaction by the plant known as blossom end rot. In short, the plant can't get enough calcium to the cell walls of the fruit. And because the ends of the actual tomato is the furthest part of the plant away from the transport system, it's the first part of the plant to fail. I really do believe that intermittent drought is the cause nine times out of 10 for blossom end rot rather than an actual calcium deficiency in the soil. So water more, but less often. Romas are the best. Treat them like a bushy vine and they'll produce bucket loads for you. Prep your bed first, starting with your soil, and then move on to getting your stakes set up and spaced properly. Get as much of the stem buried as possible to take advantage of those adventitious roots and mulch heavily before watering. Try out Romas this year. You just might find that they can be your biggest tomato producer if you set them up right. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind and I'll see you in the next video.